<laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, New Week Fortnite Live. My name is Kale Smith. I am one of the community managers here at Epic Games. We have the whole community team uh, up here today. We have Will. Uh, Will, how you doing? Doing all right. Also one of our community managers, Natalie over there. Another one of the community managers. Natalie, how are you? All right. I'm doing good. Uh, we got, there we go. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we also <laughs> not, my, not my laptop. We also have uh, Cameron Winston. He's back this week to talk about weapons. Cameron, our uh, systems designer. How are you, Cameron? I'm excellent. Thank you for asking me. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. That's good. Uh, so this week, uh, we're going to talk about uh, weapons and traps uh, within the game. We're going to explore a couple of different, well, I should say more than a couple. We're going to uh, explore quite a few uh, variants that you guys are, uh, will see. Some of you that are in OT might or might not have uh, come across some of these uh, weapons, but we want to show some of the diversity that the game has to offer. Just a small taste, and we're going to have Cameron here explain some of these things as well. Um, we have a community spotlight we're going to get into uh, as well as um, uh, traps. Traps. So uh, before we get into that, Will, you went to uh, ECGC. ECGC, right. okay. It's like a ton Eastern, of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eastern <laughs> Conference, no. well, East, Coast, East Coast, Coast Game Conference. There we yes, go. I did. Uh, how was that? Yeah, so East Coast Game Conference uh, is uh, an annual conference here uh, in Raleigh. Uh, it's probably been going on, geez, I don't know, a few years now. It's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, I, it was here, uh, my first year at Epic. I've been here four years, so it's been here at least that long. I think maybe a little bit longer than that. Uh, and basically what it is uh, is it's a place for developers and aspiring developers to, to meet up. Um, there's a lot of um, sort of panels and different things that you can go to. Um, and so I was on uh, with Wes Phillips, who's also on the Fortnite team, who's going to come play uh, a little bit later. Uh, and we were on a panel about, uh, actually about game marketing. So um, there's a lot of aspiring developers. They're, um, you know, they're building their game. Uh, but of course, once you have an awesome game, you got to figure out how to how to get it out to people and how right. to get them interested and in, and stuff like that. Um, and so we had a lot of fun doing that. Um, <coughs> the cool thing about uh, East Coast Game Conference is that. Um, because it's a local thing and because we've been uh, going, you know, pretty much every year the last several years, um, you know, we actually see a lot of people that have, uh, you know, been involved in some way or another with Fortnite. Right. So um, two years ago, um, it's actually the first place where outside of the building that we showed Fortnite to somebody. So we, we kind of brought it there. It was a bit of a surprise. Uh, we had a little, like a little booth and people would come up to it and we would talk to them and then kind of like sneak them off in a back room. It was right. like the very first time where like the team was like pretty nervous, like, Hey, you know, obviously it's, you know, we're still early on. So it was very, very early at that point. Um, and, you know, try to see like, Hey, this thing that we're working on, like, do people, do they dig it? Do, do they want right. to play? Um, and you know, what's cool is a lot of those people um, that played there then came to our Storm Chaser event in Raleigh mm -hmm. last year. Um, they have, you know, we saw a lot of them at, at, uh, at ECGC yesterday, same people, and some of them are even coming to, to visit us tomorrow. So uh, it's cool because, you know, Fortnite for us has been, uh, you know, uh, a little bit different in the sense that, like, a lot of our sort of early community building efforts we've been able to do in person. Right. So ECGC was just another another place that we did that, um, and it's cool. You bring people in the game, but before you bring them in the game, you meet them in person, and so that's kind of a unique thing that we've been doing. Were, were people's expressions, like, when they figured out that we were showing off Fortnite, were they, like, like kind of like nervous and like oh my god wait uh, I need to play like when we initially showed it a couple of years ago uh yeah there was people that were definitely surprised Prized, right. right um you know because we had you know we had initially shown our, our trailer some time ago uh and then hadn't said a whole lot about the game because we were um you know the the scope of the game changed right. uh, over time and we you know we really decided it was something we want to invest to in, into in a big way and make into this awesome thing um so no i don't think people were expecting to to see it there yeah. uh you know but then when they did um, you know, it was this awesome, you know, kind of exciting moment where, you know, people went and uh, it was cool because, you know, it was, you know, it wasn't like the big, you know, reveal that you have at like a, a, a game show or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, it was a, a little bit more intimate in that it's like, you know, 15, 20 people in a room, they play, they hang out and talk to us. Um, and that was even, you know, before we started doing the Storm Chaser events, which, which is pretty much the same vibe that we get there, right? Like right. everybody plays, they hang out. 
Um, you know, it's a lot of fun. We get feedback from people. Um, and so, yeah, that's the way that we've been doing things. Okay. Yeah. By that Sunday, like people were lining up trying to get those last tickets to come see us because it was like word kind of slowly Sp spread oh, out. Yeah, yeah. It started out, everybody was like, what do you mean Fortnite's here? It, like they just figured Epic was there in the engine capacity that we typically are. But right. word got out and then we had people coming up to us like, oh my God, give can me I a ticket to play. play? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Uh, so, um, you mentioned Storm Chasers event. Yes. Last week we gave uh, a call to action, basically, like you know we wanna, wanted a shout out to uh, to the people that are watching to let us know where they want the uh, the uh, next Storm Chasers event to be. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, we have uh, something that's essentially a topic every single right. week that, that we ask people to, to use Fortnite, uh, hashtag Fortnite Live, Fortnite and talk Live. about mm -hmm. it. Um, and so last week, you know, we've been doing these Storm Chaser events for a while. Um, we have some planned for this year, but not all of them. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, we're just trying to figure out where, where do people uh, want us to go? Where do they think that, that we should head? We heard some interesting places. Um, Chicago, somebody mentioned somewhere in Iowa. Iowa. Um, you know, there was a few, a few places. I, I think Ham, it would Ham said Denmark. I mean, <laughs> that would be, did anyone okay. suggest Alaska? Like I said last week, because Alaska would be pretty cool. I mean, <laughs> 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 maybe we could go. Oh, hey, Antarctica. anywhere there's a bunch of people that want to play Fortnite, I'm willing to go there. Uh, that's how. I, that's kind of how I feel about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and bears and, sam and, and yeah. salmon. Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Th are they known to be big gamers? I bears mean, and salmon. They, 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 I don't know. They're people. People. Everyone loves Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> Where are llamas native to? You they heard it. Be. You heard it here first. Bears and salmon are people. No peop <laughs> people. <live laughs> people live in Alaska are people, and there's also bears and salmon. There. I would love to go to Alaska. I've heard it's beautiful. Yeah, that's that's the whole point. That's why people should ask for it, so we can go there. I'm all right. I'm with you. Maybe we can if everybody in the chat wants to vote Alaska. That would be cool with me. Yeah. Um, Hashtag vote Alaska. So, but this is the kind of conversation we're gonna keep it. We're gonna keep it going. We're not gonna uh, decide in like the next few days or right. anything where that event's gonna be. We're gonna take some time with it. Uh, but we do want to continue to hear more about that. So, uh, you know, one of the things that we do when we do these topics is that people who are showing up at Twitch chat every week, people that are talking with us and Twitter and stuff like that. Um, you know, we're bringing some of them into the mm -hmm. game. We're, we're, we're making Storm Chasers. So uh, this week we brought in three more people into the game. Yep. Taco Pizza Hunter, pretty cool name, I think. D. Miller Wireless and Joe Moore uh, all came into the game this week. Uh, there's people that have been asking in the chat, are we doing codes today? No, unfortunately, we're not doing codes today. There will be time for codes again in the future, but we're actually getting pretty close near to the end of, um, OT2. of OT2. So mm -hmm. this will actually be the last week uh, on this stream that we bring new people in or announce the people that we brought in. Uh, but we do want people to keep talking and using the hashtag Fortnite Live uh, to keep talking to us because uh, we're going to do stream next week, yep. which will be our stream where we wrap up uh, online test two. Uh, and next week, what we want to hear about in between now and then on the Fortnite Live hashtag is what would you most like to know about Fortnite? We're going to try to answer some questions, things that you guys would want to know. Uh, let us know. And then next week when we do the stream, we're going to get to some of those questions. What would you most like to know about Fortnite? That's a big one. <laughs> That's a big one. Hashtag Fortnite Live. Yes. All right. That's the way. You. So uh, last week we did our first community spotlight. Yes. Um, and this week we have a brand new community spotlight member, Cooties. Yes. And Natalie's going to talk about Cooties. Uh, awesome guy. I got to play with him. Uh, was it Monday? Monday night, mm -hmm. I played with him. We played a couple hexes, and uh, we got some some stuff we're going to show you off. But uh, cooties, all yeah. about cooties. Natalie, can you tell us a little bit about? So we picked cooties uh, from our community of players in the alpha because he spent like a whole lot of time playing. I uh -huh. think he's one of the top five people uh, who spent time playing in the alpha. And in addition to that, he didn't just you know play all that time and not give us anything back. He's like spent a lot of time in the forums, forums really yeah. breaking down his feedback. Um, into categories for us and just really going in depth. So we, of course, appreciated that a great deal um, having that, from especially from somebody who spent so much time going as far as they can in the game. Um, but yeah, that and in general, he's just a really helpful player. So that was a uh, good criteria to right. spotlight him. 
Um, but yeah, Cootie's, uh, he gave us a lot of cool information. He, you know, we asked him what his favorite class was. He told us about the Outlander, you know, he kind of dispelled uh, a myth that the Outlander uh, can't move around as fast as a ninja or whatever. He's like, actually, I feel like the Outlander can do anything because, you know, I can get all these resources so quickly that I can build traps that help me right. bounce around the map really quickly or whatever I need to do. And um, he felt like the Outlander is such a good, uh, a support role for the team in terms of being able to give them resources as well as you know great in combat and um, and quick in, in all different ways so right. and, and he likes to build traps so so yeah one <laughs> of the things that you guys are seeing right now on uh, screen this is uh, in the game I was with with uh, with cooties and they he built this house of traps that uh, basically uh, jettisons the husks into uh, a, a pit Yes. And uh, we're going to replicate it today on stream just to show you guys uh, how, how awesome it is. But uh, when I was in game with him, I had not seen it built. And uh, you had mentioned, like, he gets into the zone when he's, like, oh, building yeah. these traps. So, yeah, something that he described in the interview was, like, how he kind of gets inside the mind of the husk by actually uh, when the storm spawns in the map, you can see these little swirling purple tornadoes. Mm -hmm. And that's where this, the husks are essentially going to spawn from so you can kind of he goes out to those spots on the map and he starts looking towards the atlas thinking about what's the shortest you know what's the path of least resistance and that's how he builds out his base thinking about which direction they're coming from exactly why they would attack a certain angle so he's like a husk whisperer or something <laughs> 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 <But> <laughs> that's a photoshop way to have it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah another thing that i thought was really interesting that he did is a lot of our players are catching onto this pyramid, pyramid. technique mm -hmm. where they're building metal pyramids around their base and it's a little bit more uh, resource uh, efficient because you're using you know less shapes to make your base than you would if you were just making a box or your typical building shape um, and in addition it's a, easier to navigate your base and see what's going on well in his case he doesn't complete the pyramid at the top anymore he actually closes it off with a trap so that if anybody does land on top they're just immediately hitting a trap I mean he's got all these great yeah. ideas people should check out the the blog on fortnite.com for and this more is of his stuff. what you guys are seeing right here is is uh, this hybrid pyramid that he uh, has built. Uh, he has a back entrance, and that's one of the things, the challenging things about building a pyramid is you kind of want to close it off, yeah, making it uh, a symmetrical pyramid shape. But he actually has that square top, and I believe you told me he puts a uh, a trap up on the top. Yes, so yes. if anything happens to walk up on top of it to attack the atlas, it takes damage. So or get lobbed there or yeah. anything. Yeah, really cool stuff. But um, you know, like I mentioned about how many hours he played, there was five players total that we did um so something that's shown off in the blog is a graffiti graffiti <coughs> name and these were like an easter egg that the developers put in one of our, our concept artists ben schaefer had um put together these awesome graffiti tags uh for the f five players who played the most time uh -huh. in ot1 i believe is is the criteria for that and it was it was put in like an industrial map just for them to kind of discover right. and I, I believe they even snuck it into the release notes like really deep in the release notes if they were reading it and i think that's how one of the players discovered it he's like i, I know this is in the game and cooties was actually talking about how all of these guys ended up becoming friends after this because um one person found it and then they invited the other players into the game to right. check it out um, but it was just a really cool thing. So now they all have their own graffiti tag as like a, as a part of the game. So it's pretty cool stuff. Uh, Cooties and Cassange. I know Cass I think Cassange is the one that made the, the thread, but Cooties has this picture where he's like, they're all dancing, flash dancing yeah, in front of it. So Those are my favorite. Cool. Yeah. It's I, cool I stuff. wish they were higher res pictures. Cause I wanted to share that they're like dancing in front of it, yeah. but they were really, really excited. Good. So, um, <laughs> the <laughs> the um, community spotlight member again this week is Cooties. You guys can uh, check it out on our website fortnite.com. Well, he, he gave away codes. That was another thing to mention. Oh yeah, he so did. in addition to those other you know new storm chasers, we actually have five people from uh, well Reddit or people who actually read the the blog um, post. He was a, he was going there and hang, handing Hang out it. codes to people who told him the best reason why they want to play Fortnite. So that was kind of a fun reward for him and whoever actually read his interview. Yeah, so uh, be on the lookout for the next Community Spotlight. And uh, if you see Cooties, uh, tell him that he's awesome, because he is. <laughs> All right, uh, so we are going to uh, start getting our game loaded up. We're going to get Wes up here to uh, take over and play. Um, in the meantime, is Cameron? Is right. yep. Cameron's going to uh, talk to us about weapons a bit. Uh, so. Cameron, there's a lot, there's a lot, a whole lot of weapons in the game. Yes. Uh, and I probably haven't even scratched the surface of 
As a matter of fact, we were at lunch and they were talking about a new weapon um, yeah. that uh, Bill, Bill uh, was working on. And uh, uh, we were just mind blown about that. But there's a lot of weapon diversity in the game. Um, so can you kind of talk about uh, what type of things the team wanted to offer players uh, when it comes to weapons in the game? Yeah, so um, we're, we're obviously, we're a game with, with you know, we, we have the, the, the rich shooting tradition mm -hmm. here at Epic, so of course you were going to do guns. Uh, but also, like, we wanted to kind of offer everything from, you know, melee weapons all the way through guns. And of course, that encompasses a lot of different types of gameplay. Uh, we have, uh, you know, katanas, and we have hammers, and we have axes, but we also have, you know, like, laser guns and stuff like that, which is really cool. So we wanted to kind of give players sort of like an option of, of what kind of deadly weapon do you want to use to approach a certain situation? And we're trying to make it so that different weapons have different strengths and weaknesses. Right. Um, and I, I know one of the things you had mentioned to me before was the feeling of, of like, you could be, because of the type of world that we have, you could use uh, like a broom as a weapon. Like whatever you, yeah. whatever you can find, we want to make that kind of an aspect of it. So. Um, you know, what were some of those inspirations for the weapon design? Well, if, if you look at, like, uh, our, our weapons, we kind of run the gambit from, like, uh, things that, you know, after some sort of horrible world-altering situation like we have in, in Fortnite, you know, going from the, uh, from the, oh, I found this in my garage, and now it's, you know, a broom, like you said, mm -hmm. all the way up to, you know, we have laser axes. And right. so there's a whole bunch of, like, opportunities for inspiration there, you know, whether it's... Um, Something that looks kind of uh, the word that gets tossed around the office a lot is kit bashed. So we have like the that kit bashed Fortnite look to things where we're kind of like imp like like an improvised, improvised weapon. Put and this then together, yeah. but we also have this cool technology where it's like why is this why is there a laser rack? Like you know it's awesome. There's a laser rack. So like here you have it. And and mm -hmm. so we we have everything from all that range. So any kind of idea that we have can fit somewhere in that kind of schema. And then hopefully it's it's cool for the players. And then they get to kind of choose you know, wh where they want to go with that. Right. Um, I see, I see that I'm Will Kinsler on the, on the screen over there. <laughs> you, you don't look a day over Will Kinsler. I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Will Kinsler's still sitting here. I also want to, I, I think we should do hashtag, uh, hashtag run the gambit. <laughs> run the gambit? <laughs> this is something we were talking about <laughs> earlier. <laughs> hashtag run the gambit. gambit or gamut? I gambit. think it's actually gamut, but I totally probably said gambit, didn't I? Yeah, you did. It's, totally. it's an, I mean, an uncommon mistake, awesome apparently. An awesome, he's an awesome X-Man. Yeah, he is. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> X-Man. And as a designer, I'm familiar with the Prisoner's Dilemma, which could also be referred to as a gambit. Yeah. That's true. That's so there true. you go. There you go. The gambit of whether you should say that again. <laughs> well, I should I the gambit of whether I should say what Also, again. there's not enough monkeys. Uh, can we bring some monkeys in, please? What monkeys? Uh, there we go. Thank you. They help <laughs> us focus. What monkeys? Hold on. Wait, hold on. Oh, <laughs> <he's so laughs> oh outbreak. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, it's a movie Here. reference oh. I get. Uh, my mic, hold on. I'm not used to being in a boy band. So uh, <laughs> what types of scenarios, um, you know, we talked about some of those weapons. What type of scenarios uh, are better for melee versus range? I think uh, it's kind of an obvious question, but, uh, you know, was there some type of gameplay mechanics where we want to encourage playing maybe a melee versus a range? Well, obviously, uh, certain classes are going to kind of uh, make certain weapons a little bit better. Like, mm -hmm. obviously, if you're a commando, your weapon of choice is an assault rifle, but if you're a ninja, you're probably better off using a sword. Uh, that, that's, that's definitely going to be in there. But also, certain situations are going to lend themselves to kind of uh, uh, to different kinds of weapons. Like, for example, if you've got a bunch of husks, pounding on your door, maybe a nice big hammer swing could take care of those easier than trying to shoot them all with the pistol. Likewise, if there's a flinger all the way out in there, those guys are resistant to shooting. So you want to go up there and kind of cut them up with the sword. Uh, uh, the other side of this is if you've got like a, a blaster or, or like some other kinds of like a smasher in your base, maybe you don't want to be right up in that guy's face hitting him with a melee weapon unless you're a ninja. Maybe you want to stand behind your walls and shoot him with your guns. Right. So the different situations are going to provide different uh, affordances for your tools and what you want to choose. Okay. Um, should we show some of these weapons that we're talking about? Yeah, yeah. We're going to get into the gameplay yeah. here uh, in one second. Um, we can actually probably switch over to the gameplay right now. Yeah, I mean, my face is nice and all, but I mean, there we go. <laughs> so, um, Live. just to give some backdrop, we have, uh, we're in a, a, a dev build, um, and uh, there's going to be things that we're going to spawn in here that aren't necessarily indicative of what you guys are going to play, so I want to make that uh, readily apparent. 
Um, and this just is, uh, is to show off, again, some of the weapons that we have uh, and some of the traps that you can utilize. Oh. And uh, we're going to see some different types of husks so, uh, and monsters. So, um, so right now, Wes has a, uh, is that rocket sledge? It is a rocket sledge. Uh, which is one of the melee weapons that you had uh, talked about. Mm -hmm. um, Josh, can you spawn uh, just some husks so we can see it in action? So can you kind of dancing, explain, um, you know, I know it's a work in progress, Cameron, but the combo system that, that uh, we kind of have per weapon? Sure. So first off, the rocket sledge is not a weapon, I believe, that's hooked up to this. But just the, uh, uh, in general, we have uh, combos on our hammers, our axes, and our swords. And essentially the way they work is um, you can do a, a series of left-click attacks, which will then sort of build up to a right-click attack, uh, which drains a little bit of your, uh, okay, it looks like the, the rocket sledge is actually hooked up as a hammer. So if, uh, if Wes like, does a two clicks and then a right click, he's going to get a different attack than if he does four clicks and a right click. So each of these different, uh, different attacks should be different. And every weapon also has like a default. Oh. Well, yeah, dying, dying <laughs> is definitely oh, they're not all part of the my combo system. Well, you know <laughs> we cheated everything except my health. <laughs> so you should have some health packs. Whoops. I think we gave you some. Well, you know what? When you're in the heat of battle, when you're in the heat of the moment, if you will, <laughs> then... <laughs> Sometimes you just you just die and then you respawn because that's what we got. Your team was just kind of standing like standing that's idly true. by Thanks watching you. Thanks for the help, y'all. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. Teamwork. Hashtag. Hashtag teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag bears are people. <laughs> 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 so we have uh, here though, like uh, so essentially, like if he does like two attacks and then a right click, he's gonna get like a, s a big swing. But if he does uh, four attacks and a right click, All he's right. gonna get a big AOE. Go for husks. Go for husks. We'll do it live. We'll do, we'll it, do live. it live. Where's the husks? There we go. I'm trying to. There we go. Uh, so that's a that's a three hitter. That's a three one hit combo. One, two, three, of those. and four. And then if you do four ah. hits, all right. Let's do one, Don't die. two, three, four. Now right click and you get big swing. Oh, <laughs> did I? Just he reset oh. it. He reset <laughs> it because I clicked too many times. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's. I'm a cl dude. I'm a Diablo player. <laughs> yeah, you're man. a clicker. Like, don't, don't hate. You're a clicker. One, two, three. Four, right click. Boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So All that right. kind of stuff. That's exactly how it works. So we have stuff like that for the hammers, the axes, and the swords. We're, we're constantly working on improving that experience. Like we have, uh, I've seen some designs for ways we could improve, like, you know, communication of where you are in the combo so you don't get lost. Because right. uh, like right now, we're, we're really not communicating like that that system exists because it's more of a proof of concept just to get that kind of stuff yeah. in the game. So we're, we're getting there, and uh, hopefully that'll be better as, as it goes on. What, um, <laughs> now, <laughs> uh, the, there's two bars. Well, one is health, the other one is, is energy. That's right. And when you execute Dance. some of these uh, more, one. like, uh, specials, the end of the combinations, mm -hmm. it's going to use up energy. Yes. Um, was there uh, um, a reason, I, I'm sure there's a, a very mm -hmm. good explanation for this, but was uh, it like a conscious decision to make people very conscious about yes. the energy when they use those? So there's a couple a couple reasons for that. The first is that uh, energy uh, as it exists in the game is sort of a mobility limiter because um, you, know, you have the ability to move at, at speed and then you can sprint, which means you get to move faster. So the idea is that you have sort of a choice point here where it's like, okay, uh, do I want to spend my energy moving around the map more? Do I want to spend my energy, uh, you know, attacking monsters? Do I want to spend it on some of my abilities? So it's meant to be kind of like a, a way for players to, to, to kind of decide what's important to them. Speaking so of monsters, how about we get some more monsters? So people watching the stream don't think that this game is just people running around doing nothing. Dance party. So uh, <laughs> the idea is that uh, with as lights. you <laughs> yeah, here we go with lights. <laughs> oh, oh. As you as you are doing these combos it's and it's draining your energy, you're you're having fewer mobility options. Also, uh, some oh classes that. and abilities oh, oh, might Jesus. be able to you know have cheaper <laughs> attacks and stuff right. like that. So. Right. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> we got smashed. Got so, uh, Wes, can you can you switch uh, weapons? We yeah, have a couple I'll of different that. things. As soon as I uh, resurrect after cool. your, your from my horrible performance, again. here we Keep go. Uh, well, I have everything. Okay, so what? Which you want to see first? You want to see the grenade launcher? Yeah, sure. So we can Kay. start with the grenade launcher. I think the grenade launcher uh, and the rocket launcher, for that matter, are really cool in that um, one of the elements that you guys have kind of put together, the team has put together, is the ability to use it in combat, but also as uh, a way to collect resources. 
Yeah. Now, was there a conscious decision behind that? It's not so much a conscious decision. It's just that's kind of how Fortnite works. Like a lot of a lot of design decisions uh, kind of come out of other decisions. It's not like somebody sat down and said, "Hey, should we make a gun that can collect trees?" It was like we have this game where you do damage to things, uh -huh. and when you do damage to things, they die, and when they die, you get the resources. So somebody made a gun. And and most of the guns don't damage walls because um, it would be kind of silly if you were just like you know if we have a building game and you're shooting things with a machine gun and the walls, walls are just evaporating like that would be pretty unfun pretty fast. But then when you make an explosion, of course you know the conversation goes well. Hey, if I'm shooting a rocket or if I'm shooting a grenade, shouldn't that destroy buildings? Like that just seems to make sense. So right. then we put it in and it's like oh it does destroy buildings. It does do that. Uh, and so. You know, uh, and I want to I want to you know, kind of take an opportunity to shout out some of uh, some of the guys doing this work. Um, we got you know guys like Matt Hansey, Tim Ellick, and James Kincaid kind of making decisions. A lot of times it'll start off as, "Hey, wouldn't it be cool if we had a grenade launcher?" Down there. And then they make a grenade launcher, <laughs> and then it's like, "Well, what should the grenade launcher do?" And then it's it's oh, well, it should explode things. And then it's like when it explodes things, it collects resources. And then we say, okay, well, is this fun? Should we keep this in the game? And the answer is yes, we want to keep this in the game. But then you know you run into other yeah, challenges like well, battle. you can't you can't just have a grenade launcher that you can just make ammo for forever and just keep destroying walls because then again we're back to the original problem right. of people could just shoot your walls down, the building becomes trivialized. So then we said, okay, well, what other kind of ways do we have of doing this? So like that's where you have stuff like, okay, it's a it's sort of like a limited use rare thing where like you get to make it a little bit yeah, and then it goes let's away. Let's be very very clear. These weapons that we're showing you today are like high end yes. uh, weapons that you're not going to have access to early in the game necessarily. Absolutely, right. and 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 not only that, but like these particular types of weapons, um, it's it's probably yeah. impossible for you guys to see here. But like uh, some of the weapons, it, it, they don't have oh, ammo. They have sort of durability. So whenever you shoot <laughs> them, your durability will go down a little bit. So there's a limited number of shots, and you have to make a whole new gun in order to get more shots. So they're a little bit harder to come by because we really, you know, Fortnite is uh, above all an action building game. We want to emphasize the building aspects of it. You can build some floors. Yeah, a little F2 action. F2. I know, but I'm trying to I'm trying to help him out though. And then, well, I was gonna for a minute. I was gonna troll him. I was gonna trap him down there, but that yeah. wouldn't have been very nice. <laughs> I did. Okay, great. <laughs> awesome. Oh, that see, that was a horrible. Now you're trapping him build. again. Oh yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> Good luck getting out of there, bud. All right. <laughs> some floor. Some floors need to be. Or you right. can try. All right. Fine. The people demand Back us too. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I am the architect. I will spout mumbo jumbo to you. Um, architecture. We need to kill right, more things. So yeah, can we spawn in some more enemies to see uh, see how to lay waste to them with yeah, a grenade launcher? Yeah, with a grenade launcher. Ridiculous. Or a rocket launcher. Uh, yeah, other. I don't want people to get the idea that it's going to be this easy to kill stuff. These uh, these guns are like crazy overpowered. So right just now. give us so many that we all die. All right. Lots of enemies. That we all die? <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, <laughs> let's try so not to. overwhelming <laughs> force is what you're saying. <laughs> well, we don't want them to break this this house of traps that we've that's constructed. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Don't want that to happen. Don't. But, yeah, he's spawning a bunch of enemies. And a little grenade ah. action. Katana action over here. Yeah, see how it just drops enemies. So, so by contrast, if I use the, like, the, this is like the harvesting tool. All right, that's good. Woohoo! Oh, that's, this is awesome. That's good. <laughs> well, use the grenade, our little cluster bomb grenade. Yep. I feel like a samurai right now. Uh, mission accomplished. All right, awesome. Then we got a John Woo ninja over there <laughs> shooting some, <laughs> some uh, smoothies. All right, so there are a couple really special and unique weapons that we also included uh, uh, in today's uh, stream. There is the uh, dragon pistol. Yes. Do uh, you have an image of the dragon pistol? I, I did not provide an image of the dragon well, pistol. You can kind of see it. I'm trying to like. But there is one, I believe, on the website right now. Okay. I'm actually using a laser blade. Wait, let That's me see the laser blade. It's pretty sweet. It's got some technology happening. Let's see Make some lasers. Some I mean, I don't laser things I don't happening. think Yeah, I don't know if any lasers shoot out of it, but it, it definitely cuts through people like a laser. <laughs> <laughs> so. How does do, how does a laser cut through people? I don't know. All right, here we go. All right. So, the dragon gun. Let's get some enemies. Drop some drop some fools. So, right. <coughs> with each of these designs, they have very different, you know, feels to them. Um, um, and some of the, the more futuristic uh, weapons definitely look really cool. Um, you know, we talked about some of the, the inspirations for, mm -hmm. for those. When you get to really unique weapons like this, is there like a, a moment where the team is just like, oh yeah, that's, 
that's that's it. That's Fortnite right there. Well, I mean, uh, certainly that that's going to be more on the art side. Art side. I mean, you know, wh when they come up with ideas, like a lot of times, like uh, you know, because designers are are kind of boring people, we say things like, "There needs to be a weapon that that follows a certain type of pattern. Like, we need a mid-range weapon of medium ammo consumption, like uh -huh. a deal amount of damage." And then, like, an artist would be like, "Dude, what if it was a dragon pistol?" And then it's like, <laughs> "Oh, okay, <laughs> like that's super cool." Or or we'll make a request like, "Hey, we need Help. something super awesome, like to." You know, like j just to give you an example, like that um, the, that plasma pulse that uh, the constructor just dropped there. That was essentially my request was like, I need a thing that that that, that the constructor can drop that gives area denial damage abilities. Uh -huh. and, then and then Tim was like, What if it looked like this? You know, so a lot of times like art will come up with these inspirations for like specifically like what these look like or interpreting kind of design requests in that space. Okay. And sometimes the designers just like specifically, No, man, I need a dragon <laughs> pistol and I want it to look like a dragon, <laughs> but. You know, it, it, it's kind of, it's a, give some smashers. it's a give and take. Can we get some smashers yeah. in here? At grenade oh, launcher. Oh, 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 gotta run, gotta go, gotta go. Use two. You, you, no, you don't have no, any. I, oh. No, I don't, because I'm all weapons all the time. <sighs> you gotta, See, look at you that. gotta Look how powerful pelt. that dragon gun is. Oh, dropped. Dropped. So normally it's not that easy to kill enemies. <laughs> No, especially, no, especially not the smash. smash. One <laughs> of the other things I want to mention, he's talking about uh, the, the power of it is there was a system of, of upgrading weapons and having weapon progression. Uh, can you kind of speak to how that came to be and why that? So, yeah, a, li a little bit of it. Now, I I'm not going to go into details because That's a lot fine. of this is still, you know, work it works in progress and we're still talking about this. But essentially, there is a progression of weapons. So, mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, when you start off, you've got a lot of, you know, like the, we call it like the handmade stuff. Like right. your handmade katana, your handmade pickaxe. You know, this represents like, hey, you know, you just woke up, you went into your bathroom and you're like, what can I use in here and turn <laughs> into a weapon <laughs> yeah. kind of stuff. But then eventually, as you become, you know, more badass and more cool and you get more stuff, you start to be able to build some of these cooler, techier pieces. And that's kind of like, you know, from a from a purely high level standpoint, that is progression, right? You're going from your your broom with with a knife on it, a uh, board with a nail in it, to your laser guns, to your dragon guns, to your grenade launchers, mm -hmm. and so as players progress and unlock power in the game, they become more more powerful, and these weapons sort of progress through oh that wow. as they go through the tr the traditional rarities, like you got your green weapon, your purple weapon, your right. your, your orange weapon. Okay. No, um, I died. I'm sorry. So one other weapon that we want to show off is the Zapatron. I don't know of anyone that is. I I, I think there was some talk. <laughs> there was some talk uh, of the forums. <laughs> but, you know, once we uh, showed off the dragon pistol, I believe we showed we showed it off. Uh, Help me get my backpack. But uh, the Zapatron is another one of those weapons where it's really really cool to look at. Uh, visuals on it um, has uh, a bit of an AOE on it. I, I also believe so. If you shoot at uh, a wall, for example, this weapon will take down a, a wall. And this is just another one of the cool things I want to show Wes. Having, having trouble uh, hitting the husk. Nah, I was hitting <laughs> headshots. <laughs> headshots all day, every day. What you're talking about? I was missing on purpose. Right. You know, uh -huh. I just want to, I want to show the, the common man, you know, like their experience. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> is that what the rest of us are to you, yeah. Wes? <laughs> <laughs> you know, wait, oh, let's see. Oh, that's right. Dude, you just totally wrecked the ground there. I did. <laughs> the ground is done. Mother, mother nature. <laughs> right, we go. Oh, where's monkeys? Come on, we need monkeys. Uh, right, there's not enough monkeys. So let's 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 start showing off some of the traps here. So let's let's get let's let's get the, the, <laughs> the wall of traps. Oh yeah. The wall. There's a couple of different traps that we've the set up of traps. Uh, a little bit um, uh, for for this uh, stream today. We have uh, kind of showcasing <coughs> uh, Cootie's design. Uh, so what he's done is basically chain together building uh, with some of the in uh, the in level uh, surfaces and, and 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 pits and things of that nature to um, just add one big trap to his fort as we showed earlier. Uh, we kind of made a we found a house that had a basement, so we made a pit with the basement. And then we built a, a structure around that basically um, as husks come in, these are all jump pads that are around the flooring. You will, they will jettison and hit the roof because they're slanted roofs that will actually fall into the pit. So this is some of the emergent gameplay uh, that players are coming up with in OT2 that when we see it, we're like, oh, man, that's, that's really cool. One of the big questions I have for you, Cameron, is were some of these weapon designs and traps and stuff 
was it was you guys making a conscious decision to be like it would be cool if we chained together this and this so it's not so much that like you know people didn't go around and go oh hey would it be cool if we had like a spike trap and a jump trap and we put those together but it, the the like sort of like um uh, high level mission statement is all right is fortnite is a, is a toolkit so like the idea is that we provide things like, like we we always intended them to be used together like we don't we don't just say specifically you're going to make a jump pad for this you're mm -hmm. going to make a spike trap for this we're just going to make we're going to make jump pads we're going to make spike traps and we're going to make all these things and then we expect players to kind of come up with how they use them and leverage them together to make stuff like this because that's kind of what Fortnite's all about so um, while we didn't particularly, <laughs> we no one was thinking, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we had a slanty roof building with jump traps that knock people into a pit? That's certainly not something that, that was, was thought. The idea that players would come up with stuff like this was absolutely always core to the design. Okay. So you guys can see <laughs> what's kind of <laughs> happening here <laughs> as they get thrown in. Where's our, where are those smashers at? Oh man, I'm out of. I'm out How of many work. are down there now? Ooh. Well, I've been. I've been oh no, I fell in the pit. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. How? That's the only thing you weren't supposed you to know. do. <laughs> <laughs> you don't fall into the pit where they're. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, build the stairs. Build the stairs. No. No, no they're gonna come back up. <laughs> <laughs> come back up. You weren't supposed to run under there, dude. No. <laughs> uh, that defeated right, the purpose. Yeah, yeah. If you build the stairs, can't they get out? <laughs> they can yes, get out. They can. Ah. Uh, uh oh, crap. Our AI is too yeah. smart. They know how to yeah, use I'm stairs. I was stuck in the stairs and now I'm going to die. This is this is horrible television. I you mean, can't die on television. That's true. You all can't right, do that on television. Wait, don't, oh, don't all right, all right, all right. All right, here we go. I'm out. I guess you can come out. back. <laughs> totally tried to trap West down there. Here we go. Zapatron stopped. Oh, wow. There's still more down there. Here they go. Woo. Oh, yeah. This is like... Yeah, like so shooting fish in a barrel. Yeah. I <laughs> 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 Thanks for uh, doing uh, that, Cameron. <laughs> no problem. I'm here for you. Uh, there's a Smasher. Now, the Smasher uh, has uh, some very unique properties as a uh, monster. Uh, it basically runs through your base and destroys things. Uh, so setting it up can obviously be a little bit more difficult right for some happen. of these traps. Go, go, go. Right, now, right there. Boom. Oh. Boom. It can Take currently happen. Smasher, Smasher in a barrel. What? Sorry. It's <laughs> <laughs> not really a it's barrel, but sure. It is there now. Oh, there's two of them in there. It's the new thing. So obviously every scenario is not going to be, you're not going to be able to do this in every scenario. Right. Um, uh, and the other traps that we have set up right now, uh, if you walk outside, we have uh, right, some outside. traps out in front. These are just to show off some of the wall traps. There's also some floor traps. I thought that, wait, they're not up front. Let's they're on the they're side. Uh, way out front, so you got to follow side. me. Other side, right in front of that wall. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, Will is going to uh, kind of bait some of these folks in here, and we just, uh, oh. you can shoot at some of them, Wes, but we just kind of want to show off. Oh, you want me to uh, shoot at oh, husks? No, or? no, well, Will is going to be our, our bait. All right, do he's, it. He's going to be the husk bait. Uh, they're going to spawn out by you, so you're oh. also going to be. So he's going to just r jump in front of the walls. <coughs> and some of these, uh, you know, Cameron, we talked last week to James when he was on. Uh, he kind of was he set up a, a wall trap that actually, if you remember, knocked down the husks into another oh. trap, which there was a floor trap. A and husks. then uh, <laughs> he kind of comboed those two together so that, um, you know, he could do that. So some of that's some of the kind of emergent gameplay that uh, you guys have seen. It's like on the stream yesterday, again, James setting up a, a wall trap to knock down the husks because they are attacking the, the, uh, the atlas. And then once they hit the the flooring, <laughs> then hit another trap to to kind of uh, you know oh deal man. damage. So yeah, um, we built this one up, Wes. I I would like you to uh. to run us through what you would what you would build, and then we'll we'll bait we'll bait I a house. What I would build for ooh, this ooh, for you your mean? own traps. What would you what would, if you had to build your own house of traps? So generally, I'm gonna put another trap up here. Here so it goes. Oh. We have we have all sorts of things that ne aren't necessarily even traps. But a lot of times what we'll do is we'll build, um, you know, I'll build like a, oh, I gotta press the F button, but I'll go and I'll like build like, um, I don't know, maybe like half walls. And then I will put those in, a, I'll kind of like lead them into it. So um, maybe, you know, like, so we'll have an open area that they can be hit by trap. Well, the traps are gone now, damn it. Um, you can play so you can do a I lot of stuff where, where you where you you create structures that sort of feed people into um, 
in, you know, feed uh, enemies into the... Although I think in the new build, can't they jump over half height walls? Uh, I don't know if they can jump over the half height walls, but I do know that smashers just destroy them instantly when instantly. they walk into them. So oh, that's, wow. That's, that's uh, like is that a new thing? Uh, no, that was from OT1. It's just and then a you lot of people don't notice down. it. So really, like, if you go... And shout out to... I don't know if you guys know the the Pitchford family, you know, the guys who work over... Uh, uh, Randy and his son who work over, who played this game before, they took a whole tile of this game and they 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 cleared out the whole tile and did om traps in almost every part of the map. So like, basically, they spent so much time doing that that the whole map was just filled with this type of stuff where the enemies could like do nothing. Mm -hmm. Now obviously it would take a really long time to do that, and I don't even know if you could you could gather enough resources because I think we cheated them. But like people have all sorts of crazy ways that they're doing. That. I've seen like whole communities of traps built up and things like that. Right. So. Um, but yeah, it's like it's like it's like a Rube Goldberg machine, right? Like you can come up with all sorts of ways. It's like, oh, I'm gonna launch this guy up here, and then uh, this is a good one too. It's like here's a launcher, and then there's like shock traps up here, so they immediately come in here and they get shocked. They get launched up and shocked and die. You can see them come through here, which I, I this is one of my favorites actually. Um, but sometimes this stuff, <laughs> you can see them. They're just launching. They're just launching over. That's I mean that you know sometimes it has unintended consequences. So like you could set a trap. And it will launch them, and then will just launch them on top of your base where they have easier access to your gate right. or whatever. So you definitely have to be careful of that because you'll see some of these guys will actually. Oh, I think the hit points are low. Some of these guys will. Oh man, I'm, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> some of these guys will. Um, here's my harvesting tool. Let's see, here we go. Um, they will launch over top of this and miss it all together. But you can just continue and like build, um, build some more roots here. That will prevent that. It would cr it corrals them some more. Uh, I think I have some healing trap. Now, some of our uh, uh, the Will, Josh, and Natalie, they're kind of up on the roofs. Yeah. And uh, uh, Cameron, there are also, we saw one over on um, the, the, the house of traps that we've made, the floor traps, where it's a player jump pad. Mm -hmm. um, what what type of decision making did you guys have about players using uh, specific traps so for their own benefit? Going back to like um, one of the names I mentioned earlier, Matt, Matt Hansey is kind of like um, the trap wizard, uh -huh. and he just sort of like was making stuff that he thought was cool. Cool. And like a lot of a lot of times, you know, I guess um, games uh, start out with sort of like general ideas of well, we we know we want to have traps but we don't really know what they are and mm -hmm. it takes like a guy like matt going in there and just being like let me see what we can do with the tools we have and look i made i made a spike trap look i made i made a, a, a jump tr jump pad trap do we want this i don't know and then we put it in the game man and there. then some people were like oh man i really like this this is fun because i can use this to go from from base to base especially in those multi-gate captures right. a lot of people are really ingenious with their like they can make like jump trads that let them go from gate one to gate two or another stuff like that so there's a lot of different ways to express your creativity with those with those uh, traps, uh, certainly. And um, like I said, uh, the, the metaphor is Fortnite is a toolkit. So anything that is a tool that players could use to achieve their goals, we're all for adding those kind of things. And, and sometimes we're not even sure why we're adding something. We just know it would be really cool to have this in the game because like, we know that there's a need for this. And it's not so much specifically like we're going to add this particular thing because of this scenario, like uh -huh. I said before. It's like, we're going to add this thing because this thing by itself is cool, and we think players can use this thing to achieve their goals. Have you seen any uh, emerging gameplay like the uh, the floor traps? And this is just a kind of a broad um, uh, question. Like the floor traps that, that fall into the pit where that then goes, oh, okay, that would be cool to make uh, or design around another type of, of trap or weapon. Um, it, it, it's usually like, so we, like, again, when we're, we're approaching these kind of design questions, a lot of times we're not specifically designing for like, it's not like you're going to see like, okay, monsters got launched into a pit. Wasn't that cool. Let's do that. It was more like we have to be, be able to, cause not every player is going to get super excited about launching monsters into a pit. Right. right? There's right. a certain type of player out there. It's going to be like, oh my God, I want to do that. That's exciting. Another type of player is going to go, that seems boring. I'd rather just kill them all. Or another player might say, hey, but my whole expression, and this is like, you know, if you get into like game theory, the expression of self-mastery, right? Like my, my expression of mastery is I want to make a fort that's so impenetrable that I don't even have to do anything. I'm just going to sit here and watch them helplessly flail against my ironclad walls. And that's exciting for them. So you want to make sure that 
your gameplay can kind of support all these things. Mm -hmm. So we're always we're looking at design <laughs> challenges. We're always talking about okay, what is the the mode we're making? Like right now, we have gate capture. Right. What what is the goal of gate capture? It's like well, guys come to attack a thing. We have to protect the thing. How do you protect the thing? Well, there's lots of different ways players can protect the thing. Do we offer them enough choices to protect the thing? Can they protect the thing in a way that's fun for them? Do they have agency and mastery in that? D is there a way for players to protect the thing in ways which are meaningful to them? Mm -hmm. Are we or are we forcing players into know this is the only way you can protect the thing? And that's really the only thing we're trying to avoid. Okay. Okay. Oh, so we got a complex <laughs> series yeah, but you can of funnel traps. guys with stuff like this too, where it's just like. You build uh, little walls, uh, half height walls, and you angle them in different ways. And um, again, they they come through the funnel like it's some sort of Rube, Rube Goldberg machine. And you can uh, you know you know put a jump pad here, and then they they land on this thing, and then it's a spike trap. And you know and but obviously the end goal, at least for right now, one of our objectives is the gate capture. So you're you're constantly playing keep away, right? Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Yeah. Cool this one's stuff. Has there been anything that we have not? I think we could throw. Any, any more enemies at some stuff? We some haven't different types of enemies. I know that the uh, electric husk or the electric uh, smasher is. Let's throw all sorts of stuff in there. Let's throw. Let's throw. I mean, I think we're, there's a couple we're not showing, but there we can. If you put a smasher on one end of those uh, single walls, he should charge through those. Oh, there's there's see, one. So he's kind of. <laughs> oh yeah, he's already bashing through them. Oh. Yeah, see, he just he uh. just decides oh that. Oh no! You have a uh, your stick. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, try, 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 try! Oh, make you a health pack. <laughs> oh, oh, no. geez. oh, you died. <laughs> it's electric. Uh, it's electric. Yeah. Boogie, boogie, your body boogie. sliding. No, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm making all these really <laughs> relevant references. Yeah. Like the electric slide. But I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get the? Uh, I can make like an electric boogaloo. Um, no. Would you get no, that? that no, that no. would no. Breaking two, you should look it up, imdb.com. So the <laughs> uh, electric uh, smasher is is uh, one of the uh, special <laughs> monsters. Uh, I think we're going to show off a couple different ones. Josh, if you could spawn perhaps yeah, a propane or a blaster. I'll stay away. I'll stay a little bit farther back because I apparently am horrible at this game. I mean, I'm not really horrible, but you just can't take one on one. I'm not a KL. I mean, you, you know. can't take one on one really though. Oh yeah, so let's talk about the enemy. So which what was that one that just spawned? Oh, that's my backpack group. The husky husk. Yeah. So those clouds are like basically where he's poisonous. Yeah. His and barf, it kind of makes barf gas. I don't. Is that the technical term? I don't. Uh, <laughs> the more, more. Yeah. We need more. Well, more the technical barf term gas. is the. Uh, I, I, th I think it's called like a uh, enemy collision volume or something like that. Yeah, let's not say that. Yeah, we no. don't. I don't think we want the technical <laughs> no. term. So boring. <laughs> hey kids. I think we all just check fell out our asleep. enemy collision volume. <laughs> so hey, listen. You asked for the technical term. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that uh, you know kind of adds to the weapons you use and Where the traps you build is the different we uh, the different enemies that are in the game. Yeah. Uh, so, Dance you know, party. a lot of, uh, of decision making. The graphics on level four, here we uh, go. For the, for Whoa, example, for the propane oh, I'm uh, sorry, I was uh, husks are that they will oh. blow up oh. your base oh. if you oh. let them. They'll throw down the propane and blow yeah. things up. So, Boom. Um, it kind of makes like, you know, using a weapon that's longer range Headshot. or attacking them before they even get to your base Whoa. a lot more, um, you know, readily apparent once you see them in action. Yes. Well, I mean, obviously, like, if you're going up oh, against a lot of smashers bees, and you got make a, uh, a bunch of level one walls, you're going to have a bad time. If you go up against a lot of bee guys ah, and you're using a bunch of, ah, of melees, you're going to have a bad time. So, like, being able to uh, adjust your strategy to what you're fighting right. is certainly important. And, like, you know, showing that elemental guy earlier, like, some of the uh, elemental themed creatures deal more damage to certain kinds of structures. Like, the fire guys deal more damage to wood oh. structures, mm -hmm. and the oh, lightning guys on. do more damage to metal oh, structures. Wow. So, that you're delayed if, you, if you build this all one thing and you're fighting, and those are, like, late game kind late of they concepts. Are. They but are. But, oh. like, as you get into those kind of things, like, we're hoping that players will be able to alter their building, alter their play style to kind of adapt to different challenges. That's and, again, go Going back to that Fortnite is a toolkit metaphor. This is the pitcher hut. So yeah, the pitcher hut. Seen it before. Oh, they throw instead of baseballs, they throw bones. I think you're about to die. There's another I husky am about husk. to die as I'm running. With his away. <laughs> I'm gonna run. I'm gonna do uh, some collision some long volume range, or something. What did you? Up here on the roof. Let's see. Oh, uh, see, not too bad. Not too bad. Oh, that was bad. So there with the go. husky husk and the 
what was it? The bee husk? That one I don't actually know the technical name of either. The beehive husk. I, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to actually name. say That's any of those names. Cause I don't know any of them either. That's the so name. Beehive husk. Okay, I believe you. Yeah, it is. Because I was in a meeting one time, and we were like, "What should we call it? A beehive husk." Okay, cool, done. So okay. obviously, <laughs> like, like a very uh, common gameism, they've got a cloud of stuff you should not walk in. Yep. Or you it's die it's very fast. It's like an area of effect. So how quickly will the area of effect kill you? Very. Very I fast. I tested fast. it, and I've died many times. So I oh, can wow. Confirm. Okay, the electric husks. I can run into this little herd of electric husk raptor type things here. <laughs> Mini husks? Mini husks. Yeah, those are some, uh, some ah. incredible effects. Uh, so I can, I can try to guys. escape in this little, make them, yeah, that's right. Hold them up. See, that slowing enemies up is, is just as good sometimes as traps. Oh. She gives you a chance to get away. Mm -hmm. So, here. with that, we've seen a couple different weapons. Oh, fire. A couple different uh, types of traps. Guys got some concepts. We showed off Cootie's design, so shout out to Cootie's uh, in this particular uh, show today. It's the first time I'm a big fan of Cootie's, really. Cootie's is S awesome. Since second grade, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, but uh, what we want to do, we're going to basically wrap up this, the show today. Hope you guys uh, all enjoyed it. Remember to uh, use that hashtag Fortnite Live, uh, and uh, I'd like some monkeys to take us out. We need some monkeys. Is gonna overwhelm us with husks. All right, us? overwhelm us and oh, overwhelm where? us with the love of monkeys. Oh, jeez, oh, that's so no, many. No, that's no. all the smashers. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Save what, us, monkeys. <laughs> what would you like to know about Fortnite? Hashtag ah, Fortnite Live. Ah, what's happening? <laughs> Help me. There's lots of smashing going on. I think that Wes is going to die yet again. <laughs> we should have a we I'm should have a, a we should have a Wes death bottom. counter oh on yeah, the bottom. Oh yeah, that's right. You can't get be <laughs> behind this poorly put together wall smasher. <laughs> Look at me. I'm I'm holding my own. We hope you yeah. all enjoyed today's show. Make sure to follow us on Twitch, Twitter, oh, uh, Facebook, all the places that you can is to stay up to speed on everything my Fortnite. Space. Friendster. No, not those things. <laughs> 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 not those things. Uh, <laughs> uh, but we will be back next week. I believe the show is going to be on Tuesday of next week uh, as we wrap up OT2. So I'm oh looking forward gosh. to seeing one, everyone uh, oh, uh, in the stream. Oh, and we will see you all next week. Friendster. Oh. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Monkey.